Sometimes we have a problem when we record audio, and it's, uh, it's particularly with microphones when we do things like this, and then things like this, and then you can't hear what's being said. It's really difficult to hear audio unless it's at a consistent level. So I'll talk to you a little bit about that. How to remove unwanted background noise. Anyone in the room had unwanted background noise? <laughs> yes, a very, very common problem. Uh, and we'll talk about that as well in this session. Also, how to improve audio in Premiere Pro, uh, that obviously a popular video editor, and Adobe Audition as well, editing audio from Premiere inside Audition. Just interested, actually, a show of hands, who's actually using Adobe Creative Cloud? So quite a few in the room are using it. That's fantastic. That's the software I've used for a long time. I know it really well, so hopefully I'll give you some tips inside that. But do bear in mind, that audio is still the underdog. Although it's nice to see in this room there are a lot of people that are really interested in audio today, so hopefully we can figure out how to bring it into the spotlight a little bit. We often say boo when we hear sounds like EQ, noise gate, dynamics. It's not really very exciting, is it? It's very, very nerdy and technical. So audio has a problem because there are too many technical terms. We need to simplify these terms, and that's what I'm hoping to do for you in this session. You are the video expert. My goal is to get you into audio, paying attention to your audio, getting it sounding great, and as a result, improving your YouTube channel, because maybe people will stay watching for longer or enjoying your videos for longer. I'm gonna focus on just 20% of the tools today that will give you 80% of the success. There will be some tools that I will specifically point out to you that you can pay attention to because it's very overwhelming. Sometimes you sit in front of an editor or in front of a mixing desk and you look at all the buttons and the, the knobs and you think, crikey, what does everything do? I will point out the 20% that will help you in this session. And it's good news. These tips will work in any audio editor. Despite my showing you in Adobe Audition, you can actually apply these tips once you know them in your favorite audio editor, even the free ones. So I use Audition, it's got lots of great features. If you want to know why I use Audition, just take a, a photo of that slide. I won't bore you by reading out all the points, but those are just a few reasons why I like to use it. And also I've been using it since I can remember, maybe two decades or so. So this is the audio editor I use to make audio sound great. So here's my thing for you. Bad audio is like bad bread. It really stinks. So I'm gonna show you how to clean it up now. And I'm gonna start off with a few examples to start this session. I'm gonna give you four examples. I pre-recorded some videos in my studio earlier on, and I'm gonna play them to you. They last about three or four minutes in duration, showing you some quick tips on how to get rid of that bad breath, that stink from your audio. The reason I've done that is so that you can see things clearly, and so there are no technical problems. If I was to show you here and something just didn't work, at least it's recorded in a video and ready for you. Also, don't worry, particularly if you're sitting at the back and you're kind of squinting your eyes and going, I can't see what he's doing there in that audio editor. At the end of this session, I will give you a method to be able to get this whole presentation, including the four videos I created, so that you can then take them home from VidCon and learn at your own time and follow them through as you go. So that's a little setup for these examples. So bad breath, Tony Blair. Uh, I, I don't know if he has bad breath. Sorry, that was a really awkward transition. Example one is Tony Blair. Um, we had a client recently who scored a fantastic interview with Tony Blair. What a great opportunity. This is where you feel really nervous when you get that really, really good guest. You think, gosh, I've got to get the microphone, I've got to get everything sounding right. And you don't really get two takes with Tony Blair. You only really get one take. So you can feel really nervous. Am I going to get this audio sounding good? Well, our client didn't really get their audio sounding good. In fact, they had it sounding dreadful. They did everything wrong. They recorded in a big room like probably this, where you can hear my voice as I'm speaking to you now, is echoing all around the room, so that was the first terrible mistake. And secondly, they held the microphone like this to Tony Blair, so that nobody could hear what he was saying, and it was echoing around the room. So anyway, I'm gonna introduce you to my virtual mic in the slide for this first three or four minute example to show you how Tony Blair's audio sounded when our client interviewed him, and how it could sound after using something called Essential Sound in Adobe Audition, which is a super easy thing to use to improve sound quality. So virtual mic in the slides, take it away. Well, hello VidCon, and thank you, Mike, for that lovely intro. This is virtual mic inside the slides. 
So, client scored a fantastic interview with Tony Blair, but didn't have the right equipment or the correct room. Let's have a listen to some of the audio. Can't hear it. <laughs> a lot of problems with that audio. First, recorded on a portable recorder with stereo microphones in a room with lots of echo, and the microphone is not close at all to Tony Blair. So, hence we're getting quiet audio and a lot of room reflections, a lot of echo on the audio. As it's recorded in stereo, what I'm going to do is delete this and pop down this menu next to the audio file in Adobe Audition and drag in only the left channel. This should already improve the audio as we're just using one of the portable recorder mics rather than two. And already we can hear a slight difference, but next it's time to dig in deep and head over to this panel called Essential Sound, assign the audio as dialogue, and go ahead and add a few extra processes, including this in the Clarity tab here, Dynamics. When I enable this, it will scan the audio uh, to make it sound louder and clearer as you move this slider from left to right. Let's listen to the effect. The difference technology can make could be huge. Mm -hmm. you know, if, you're, if you're talking about the difference technology... Can... So that's with Dynamics applied and without... The difference technology can make... With... The difference technology can make. So now the only thing we're battling up against is the room reverb, that echo that's bouncing off the walls. If you go into the repair tab here in Essential Sound, you have a number of choices. Reduce noise for noisy environments, rumble, de-hum, de-s, lots of stuff there. We're going to focus on this reduce reverb right now. Setting it at its default should make already a dramatic difference. The difference technology can make. And without reduce reverb? The difference technology can make a huge room difference, and then turning this up to maximum. The difference technology can make well, apart from a few artifacty sounds that you're going to get when you start reducing reverb dramatically using this plugin, it's sounding almost like Tony Blair is speaking into the microphone. Let's dial that back down again to maybe six, and finally back into the clarity tab. One final thing you can do is add a bit of EQ, equalization, to improve the clarity and crispness of the voice. Uh, and I'm going to go for a preset called Subtle Boost Male. Let's have a listen. The difference technology may. So that is Tony Blair with all of these processes applied. I'm now going to go over here, switch off these effects, play it back, and then play it back once more with the effects applied. Without. The difference technology may. And with. The difference technology may. So there you go, that is example one. That is just an example of the possibilities that you can do. Now, I understand in this room that I'm presenting to you right now, you're hearing on speakers that are echoing all around the room. So when I said, let's add reduce reverb, it kind of didn't really reduce reverb in this room. But don't worry, when you get the videos later and you take a look into this and follow along later on, you'll actually hear the significant difference it made to the room reverb. Um, and who here noticed the difference, by the way, between before and after? Hopefully, yeah, all of you. <laughs> so just with a few tools, I wanted to show you just how simple it is to do this kind of work on audio and work through three more out of my four examples before I get into some more kind of techy uh, terms just to kind of give you a flavor of what else is possible after these examples. So example two, I'm sure all of you will be very familiar with this, an expo floor because you're at an event right now um, where often there is an opportunity to quickly grab someone that you know or someone you like uh, who's on YouTube or you think that's that person I really need to get them on my channel or on, on my podcast or whatever um, But unfortunately you can't tell everyone on the expo floor to be quiet. Hang on. Just be quiet while I do this interview you No, know, people are going to be chattering away and this is a problem that can actually be resolved fairly easily Take a look at example two where I show you how to use noise reduction to remove pretty much most of the background chatter. In this next example, our host is speaking into the microphone clearly, but it's recorded on an expo floor. Hello everybody and welcome to today's show. So as you can hear, obviously the voice is good, but the rumble and clatter and chatter in the background is not so good. There are a couple of ways you can remedy this. First and foremost, in most audio editors, you'll have some form of noise reduction. So simply by selecting the audio you want to eliminate, that audio, the background audio, and then going into the effects menu, for instance, in Adobe Audition, noise reduction and restoration, capture the noise print of the audio you want to remove, uh, and then selecting everything, and then going to effects, noise reduction, restoration, and run a noise reduction process. 
This will use the noise print you've just captured. Uh, of course, you can capture it inside the effect here, capture noise print. And generally, on default settings, it's going to do pretty good work. So let's start again capturing that noise print just to get the print there and then playing back the audio. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's show. It's a little bit better, but of course, you can hear a lot of echo now being introduced. And of course, well, the sound is still there. Now we can change that by pushing the noise reduction up here. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's show. The higher we push this, the more the noise reduction will kick in, but the lesser quality uh, you'll hear on the actual voice itself. Well, not to fear, there is another way of doing this, and it's a really good one, and it's using machine learning. So no need for you to do noise prints or anything like that. You can just go ahead and apply this effect and get rid of the audio. So let's just highlight a little bit of this audio here. Listen to it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's show. Okay, busy, busy clip there with stuff going on in the background. In the effects menu, under noise reduction and restoration, look for this denoise, and then just start at zero over here and increase the amount of denoise you want. The rest is done by machine learning. Really is a fantastic tool. Listen to how it makes a difference as I play back and increase. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's show. So Hello, that's with it right up at the top. To today's show. And then we'll switch it off again. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's show. With it back on. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's show. So some really good stuff that you can do to the voice using either noise reduction in most audio editors or this denoise effect inside Adobe Audition, you will pretty much eliminate background noise from your Expo Floor recordings. So if you write down one note from that example, write down denoise. Denoise is an amazing addition to Adobe Audition CC 2019. What it does is it, uh, people often say, well, how does it know what to denoise? Generally, it focuses on the voice and tries to eliminate everything else outside the voice. So a really good thing to be using if you have noisy stuff. And the great news uh, for a lot of you in here, I know are Premiere Pro users, you put your hands up earlier and said that, Denoise is also available inside Premiere Pro. So really, really good stuff. Example three is really, really hard to resolve. And I always tell people, please, 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 get the very best audio equipment you can and record well at source. Please do it because, well, it kind of puts me out of a job, but it makes your job a lot easier. Bad equipment is just the worst thing to try and improve. Thankfully, I have a really good microphone here. Everything's sounding great in this room, but often it doesn't. So what can we do with bad equipment recordings? Let's have a look at this third penultimate example. Example three will focus on bad equipment in a bad room. Have a listen to this. And you really have to, you really have to, you really have to have a mindset. Okay, lots going on there, including background noise, just as we've been dealing with in the previous examples. I'm going to bring into the effects rack here from noise reduction and restoration, denoise. And again, my amount will go up from zero and gradually increase until I find a good spot that's removing most of the background noise. Let's have a listen. And you really have to, you really have to, so around 55%, we're losing most of that background ambience. And just to check this, I'm going to output the noise only by ticking this icon here and having a listen to the background noise only. So as you can hear, most of the background noise is included, but not much of the voice. So I'm going to now untick that and leave that as is. Next thing is we'd like this voice to be louder and clearer to be able to hear. So I'm going to add some dynamics, some compression to this voice. And I'll show you how this works by opening a preview window in Adobe Audition. So you can see down here in the bottom window the effect that my adding a compressor will have. Amplitude and compression. And we'll go to single band compressor here. And I'm just going to set this up at a threshold of around minus 15. This will mean the compressor will work on any audio that is louder than minus 15 dB. That's quite a lot of the audio. And the ratio is how much you want it to compress that audio by. So let's see, the more I push the ratio up, the more it's going to compress the audio down here in the preview window. As you can see, it's really pushing that audio right down to almost a flat line. I'm going to pull it down to around 3 to 1. That'll be enough for this example. And finally, on the single band compressor, I'm using the output gain to increase the volume of this audio so it's a little bit louder after the compression has pushed down a lot of the audio. Let's have a listen now. And you really have to, you really have to, you really have to have a mindset. Because you know how they say, Mitchell loves company? 
So that's with denoise and single band compressor without. Then you really have to, you really have to, you really have to have a mindset. Because you know how they say mutual loves company? Back on again and let's have a listen. Then you really have to, you really have to, you really have to have a mindset. Nice and clear, but we can still see in between the speech here and around here, there is still noise and background ambience. So to completely close the gate on that, we are going to add a noise gate in here, and we'll go to amplitude and compression, dynamics, and here I'm going to tick and enable the auto gate. Now the threshold, minus 25, that is the dB level that audio has to be to get through the gate. Anything below minus 25 dB, which is most of the silence, will disappear. And as you can see, waveform is a lot clearer here and here and also here when our guest is not speaking. Release, attack, we can leave pretty much as is. Hold, we may need to change. Let's have a listen. You really have to, you really have to, you really have to have a mindset. Because you know they say mutual loves company. And you can actually see on the gate as it's closing, it's going red, no audio getting through. And when we're hearing speech, we're seeing green. Um, if you're finding that the gate is closing and opening a little too harshly and it's cutting off words, increase the hold to make that a smoother fade in and out. I'm going to make it around 50 millisecond here. Then you really have to, you really have to, you really have to have a mindset. Because you know they say mutual loves company. And now we've got a pretty sweet setup. You see the yellow there is the hold as it's opening and closing, uh, just with three effects, denoise, single band compressor, and also the auto gate inside the dynamics effect. We're getting a much clearer, better sound. This is the audio before. Let's have a listen. And you really have to, you really have to, you really have to have a mindset. And then we'll apply those effects and listen once more to the final piece. And you really have to, you really have to, you really have to have a mindset. Because you know they say mutual loves company. So as you can hear there, it does make a dramatic difference using some of these effects inside your audio editor. Okay, we've seen three examples. I'm going to give you one more example, and then we'll get into a few more little bits of knowledge for you uh, that you can take back with you from this session. Example four is unicorns and rainbows. They've figured it out. They've got the great equipment. Everything sounds fantastic. We just need to add a little bit extra to make it sound good. Let's see, this is a podcast episode here uh, with audio pretty much all sounding good. There's just a little bit of microphone bleed on each channel. There's three guests speaking here. Let's see how we'd add a little bit of finesse to this final example. Okay, in this final example, we've got a good recording in a good room on good equipment. How can we just add a little bit of sparkle to make it really sound great? Here is a three guest piece of audio recorded on separate tracks using a Zoom recorder. Really good practice, so you can individually edit each guest. Let's have a listen. The other guest. Yeah, yeah. And this guest. Okay. Now the first thing you'll notice is the guests are all at different volume levels, which is really, really tough uh, to even out unless you want to go through increasing and decreasing volume levels. Good thing about Adobe Audition is there's a fantastic match loudness feature. If you select all of the tracks in multi-track, right click and go for match clip loudness, you can stick with a target loudness of minus 16 luffs. That's what most people for YouTube and streaming tend to use. So that's the number you can use there. Click OK. It's going to go through and match the loudness levels of each piece of audio. As you can see there, it has done. Now let's play back and listen to the transitions. Oh, I like so much. We did it down so much. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And from here. And now it sounds really clear that everything is at the same level. The next thing you might want to do to improve the sound of this audio is simply go onto the master track and add some overall EQ to all speakers. So here I'm going to go into here, filter and EQ, and parametric equalizer. Go to the default, and there are two things I'm going to do. Add a high pass filter using this HP and moving this along. No human voice goes below 100 Hz, so we can safely push this up until we hear the voices thinning out. So as you can hear, it's thinning out the voice, so bring it back in. Until you hear the voice nice and full. What this will do will eliminate low frequencies, rumbles, wind, mic bumps, things like that. Really good best practice to get into adding to your audio a high pass filter. Finally, crisp and clear, let's add on some high end here. Maybe change the shape of that curve using this icon here. So we just add on a little bit of high end to the voices. 
Aga ilmselt muutuvad ka välimeedia puhul need tehnilised... That's an extreme example, but now you can really hear the EQ change. Aga ilmselt muutuvad ka välimeedia puhul need tehnilised lahendused, et... You can definitely hear the change as I boost that up really high, but this is just a subtle increase on the high end to make those voices crisp and clear. And the final thing you could then go ahead and do, as we're working with free track audio here, we can actually eliminate the audio from the separate tracks when the other guests are not speaking, like this and like this, highlighting and deleting on each track, and then using these grey triangles to fade in each guest as it comes to their time to speak. And again, deleting this like that, so we now have nice clean audio. With good transitions, good clarity, and good volume levels. So there you go, that's the end of example four, and that gives you an idea of what's possible and what you can do using really simple tools inside Adobe Audition. So let's take a look at both Audition and Premiere Pro in a nutshell. Let's give you some deeper dive for the end of the presentation before I'll throw the microphone over to you and get some of your questions. If you have any questions, if you have anything you're suffering with with audio at the moment, feel free uh, to get ready to ask about that towards the end of this session. So looking at Adobe Audition, one thing we've used a lot in those examples is compression. So I wanted to spend just a moment expanding on compression and showing you exactly what it's really doing. So compression, first and foremost, is compressing the audio. So you've got really loud audio with lots of peaks. Let me show you a waveform like that. Really loud peaks at the start, and then it goes a lot softer at the end. What compression will do is it will take audio that goes above a certain level, say here, minus 25 dB, and it will take those peaks and push them down by a ratio you select. So let me show you. First of all, threshold. What is the level of audio you want to compress above? Minus 25. Ratio. How much do you want to compress that audio? If you have it at one, one to one, it will not compress at all. If you have it at two to one, it will cut any audio in half that goes above the threshold. Any higher than that, and you're really pushing your audio down. Then we've got these tools here, attack and release. Attack is how fast the compressor works and compresses your audio. So one millisecond is very, very quick. And then release is how slowly or quickly it releases and lets your audio return to its original level. Finally, when you do compress audio, it will reduce the volume of that audio. So you need to turn the output gain up. Here I've got a 5 dB increase. And I want to show you now visually how it will change the look of your audio. This is a waveform. We're very used to seeing waveforms even in Premiere for our audio. After you've added compression to it, it looks like that. Much more even, and it's much easier for your listener or your viewer to hear everything that's being said. If you start your video off and you're really loud and you talk like this, and then you go like that, and then you go like that, well, compression evens that all out so that everything is at a constant volume. Really, really recommend you using at least a little bit of compression on any kind of work you're doing with audio. I did mention EQ quite a bit as well in those examples, and I want to tell you why EQ is important. Most of you will be familiar with EQ, even if you find EQ or equalization a scary word. If you've ever driven a car and you've looked at the stereo and you've said, let's increase the bass and make it really fat and make the speakers rumble, or let's increase the, increase the clarity with the treble, then you've definitely already played with EQ. All this is is a much fancier way of adding EQ to specific frequencies, any audio frequency you want, the only two things I want you to take away from this session, we could do a whole session on EQ, um, but two things I'd like you to take away from this session is that I'd like you to be adding a high pass filter, that's this button here, HP, on the parametric EQ, and then you can cut off anything below 100 hertz there. So like I was saying in the example, anything that's not inside the human voice that just simply shouldn't be there, you can eliminate that. So I'd like you to be adding high pass filters, even when I record YouTube videos, I'm always, always, always adding a high pass filter. It's just a good practice to get into. Um, also, I want you to focus on the high end as well. Don't worry about the mid range. There are things you can definitely do with the mid range to bring things out and also to fix problems. But just so that you take another thing back, I'd like you to look at the high end, this H thing here, and pull this up until you just start to hear your voice getting a little crisper, a little clearer, a little nicer. So, high pass filter and adding some high end on at the top. 
It doesn't help that high end is named the same as high pass, which is getting rid of the luck. But anyway, hopefully those two things you'll write down and you'll take home from this session. That's how a high pass filter looks when it's added. And that's how the high end looks generally when that's added. Of course, you can use your ear. And I would say always, always trust your ears. Don't go nuts and put on too much. If you think, oh, that sounds awful, then just dial it back a bit. Denoise, I'm a big, big fan of this uh, new effect. This is absolutely fantastic. Um, really, it is just one slider. So it's really making, taking noise and horrible background noises out of your video or your audio productions much, much easier. Before, as you, you did see in one of my examples earlier, I was using the capture noise print and there are so many dials and controls on it, it's really confusing. This one is simply a slider from zero to 100%. It uses really clever machine learning and it really does focus on the voice and get rid of pretty much everything else. It's really, really tough to actually get denoise so that it doesn't work very well. If you wanted to dive a little bit deeper, I'll give you a very brief look into these buttons here. This is the processing focus. So these are the frequencies that denoise will focus on. Now, if you know when you're listening to your speech that there is something you really want to get rid of, uh, and you know what frequency it resides in, you can actually tell denoise to focus on it. So if we're getting rid of motorbike sounds, we focus here on the low end. That's the low end button. If we're converting cassette tapes into audio, digital audio, we know there's a lot of hiss on those cassettes, and there's a lot of high end, so we can actually click processing focus and put it on high end. Then you've got this focus on the mid range, which is pretty much where the voice resides. So if you click that one, you may well lose a lot of your vocals. So uh, there may be some examples where you want to use it, but not particularly. And this one is kind of that stereo smile that we're used to almost hi fi systems, eliminating noises in the very low and very high end. But like I say, processing focus is really advanced. In uh, most situations, you just leave it on the flat line and let the plugin do the work for you. Spoke a little bit about noise gate. Uh, so what is a noise gate? I did promise not to confuse you and upset you with these geeky, terrible terms at the moment. Just to check who is still with me in the room. Good. <laughs> so a noise gate, I'm gonna try and really simplify this for you. Uh, it's like a fairground ride. When you go to the theme park, uh, you get there and they have a little uh, measurement, it's like one meter. You must be taller than one meter to get on the ride. So this is exactly what a noise gate's doing. Your audio must be taller than a certain dB level, decibel level, that's the, the actual volume of your audio, uh, to get through the gate. If it's quieter than that level, it won't get through, it won't get heard. So as you move your threshold up to zero dB, nothing's gonna get through, nothing will be heard. The more you dial that down, the more audio gets through. And the secret really is dialing this just right the threshold in particular, so that it cuts out the background noise, but keeps your spoken audio. It's really handy. I wouldn't always use a noise gate in every situation. I wouldn't use it if I'm recording outside and there is a lot of background noise that I want. For instance, if I'm in a park and there are birds tweeting and there's a running sound of water, I wouldn't want to noise gate that audio out if it would sound really awkward and it would keep cutting in and out. So um, definitely consider a noise gate when you're recording in a pretty much studio environment, but there's just a few bits getting through. Attack and release, again, very similar to compressor, how quickly it works and how quickly it stops working. And the hold is just a fade between opening and closing. If you're finding it's clipping your audio out, uh, increase the hold value there. And we will take a little look at Premiere Pro. If you're already using Premiere Pro, most of the features I have shown you in Adobe Audition actually also work inside Adobe Premiere Pro, and they're really easy to access. Here I am in Premiere Pro, very familiar workspace for many of you in this room, I'm sure. Right up at the top, this is very, very small on this screen, I really apologize for you at the back, who are probably really squinting your eyes to see this. Probably do this with the lights out, actually. <laughs> It'd be easier to see. Um, but like I say, in the slides later on, you'll be able to take a look at this yourself if you're unsure of anything. Uh, right here, uh, there is a dial next to the top of the mixer, and you access this view by clicking the audio workspace up here. So usually you get like the editing workspace in Premiere Pro. If you click the audio workspace, it gives you this mixer. You click this up at the top, look right there. I did zoom in a little bit for you, this little tiny triangle, and it pops down uh, a nice little effect track where you can add the same effects that are available to you that I've just been demonstrating in Adobe Audition. So to reel through these uh, pretty quickly, because how are we doing for time? Yeah, we're doing pretty well. I do want to leave at least uh, five or 10 minutes at the end for some questions. So we're getting close to the end now. 
Uh, so I'll go through just a few little things you can do in Premiere and some of my practices I do on all my YouTube videos in Premiere Pro. First and foremost, I use the Amplify effect. Uh, again, you drop down this first effect here, look for Amplitude and Compression, go to Amplify. And this is great when you look at your level meters and you see that the audio is super, super quiet. I'm sure many of you in this room have recorded audio. It's been really, really quiet and you need to amplify it. So just here, you can add a 20 dB boost or however much you need to increase your audio by. And that will bring your levels right up to near the top. We don't want them to go too far and click and distort, but we do want to make sure that our audio is heard. So that's the first and foremost thing. Then we've got EQ, again, accessible up here. Filter and EQ, parametric equalizer. We'll bring you up, again, this very now familiar to you uh, EQ panel, where I'm going to encourage you to do what? What's this, everyone? High pass filter, yes. And what are we doing up at that end, everyone? High end, yes. Excellent, so you can do all of this inside Premiere Pro. Dynamics available to you as well. A brilliant panel, Amplitude and Compression Dynamics. This is a really big panel, uh, probably too much to go into detail in, in this particular session, uh, but if you want to ask me a question about it at the end, or even just get in touch with me after this presentation, I'll be happy to walk you through some of the ideas in here. There's lots of compression, there's noise getting in there, uh, there's a limiter, I use a limiter, this is one thing I haven't introduced you to. A limiter is fantastic, because it means no matter how loud your audio goes, the limiter stops it going any higher than the value you specify. This is good because if you don't use a limiter, sometimes your audio can peak and distort and clip and sound absolutely horrible. So lots and lots of good stuff in the dynamics effect. I'm gonna encourage you to explore and use that on your future videos as you're producing them. That's a close up view, so like I say, auto gate, we looked at the noise gate earlier, we looked at a compressor earlier, we haven't touched on expander, it's a very good tool, but again, maybe something for another time. And limiter I've just briefly touched on here. You can see I've got the threshold at minus one dB. This basically means that my audio will never go above minus one dB. It will never clip, it will never get too loud, which is great. Um, and then finally, if you're a real, real power user and you're working in Premiere Pro, you can actually export any clip from the sequence, any audio clip, straight to Adobe Audition like this, you just right click on the audio inside your sequence, you look for edit clip in Adobe Audition, and within a couple of seconds, boom, it'll render it out in Adobe Audition. You can make any changes you want, apply any effects. You might be looking at me and say, well Mike, why would I want to do this? I can do most of everything you've just described inside Premiere Pro. And the reason you may want to export to Adobe Audition, it has a much better waveform editor. So if you really want to zoom right in on your audio, that is what Audition is going to allow you to do, as opposed to Premiere, where, well, those waveforms are a little smaller and they're not really the main focus of what you're doing in a sequence. So, just to recap, we've had four examples, and in this workshop, we did learn how to make your voice sound crisp and clear using things like EQ, very, very important, high pass and high end. We learned how to make your voice sound louder using compression. Hopefully you're all gonna be able to walk out of this session, tell everyone about compression. We also learned how to remove unwanted background noise. I think most of the room, you put your hands up at the start saying you've come across background noise you want to eliminate. We've also learned how to improve audio inside Premiere Pro without even leaving and going to audition. And we've learned how to edit audio from Premiere Pro inside Adobe Audition, become a bit more of an audio power user. It's uh, time for the Q&A. Thank you very much. <laughs> and if you're super nervy about audio, uh, after you've had your lunch, after we get out of this session, I would love you to hop off across to room number one. So go after this session, uh, come to room number one for a podcasting 101. If you want to take things further and actually create your own podcast, I'm going to give you everything you need to start your own high quality podcast. That's coming up at two in the very intimate room one. So we can get a little bit closer and talk a little bit more in detail about starting podcasts, which will be great. Uh, I did also promise just before the Q&A that I would give you my details in case you wanted to get the presentation and the videos. I will send them to you. All you gotta do is just drop me an email uh, and put in the title of the word like audio or something that will make me know uh, that you were in this session. And then I'll just send you the slides and I'll send you the video. I'll send you a link to download them all. You can watch them at your own leisure. But thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here. And thank you for the time. <laughs>
I'm definitely ready for some questions. Thank you. We've got a roving reporter around, so any hands, I want to get to as many as we can. So, Hello. Uh, in making my podcast, what I found a big problem is breath. Uh, as somebody's talking on a long ramp and then they're breathing in between. But when I try to remove it using any auto functions, I tend to get a very tinny, almost like Skype call sound to it. Is there a good tool or way to remove breath without having to remove them all individually? That's a really good question. So with your breath, can I just ask you, with your breath that you're removing, um, are you finding that the breath is too loud, too quiet? What's your issue there? Um, Right. And so it's kind of at volume with everything else. Right. So you've got kind of like they're talking and they go, and then they're talking and they go like that. So yeah. Okay. So there are a couple of ways that you can really easily remedy that. The first one is there's actually a really good plugin that you can buy. Uh, I think it's around thirty nine dollars uh, from Waves. It's called Deep Breath. That's one of the best ways I've found to eliminate breaths. It, it uses some kind of clever algorithm uh, that will actually search for the breaths in your audio and either reduce them, although I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise completely eliminating, gating out breaths, because it can sound really unnatural. You, you kind of lose, yeah, lose the breath. So what I would advise doing is maybe just ducking them by 10 or 20 dB, so you kind of get that natural sound, and like you say, not that kind of robotic <gasps> into the mic. So that's deep breath. Also a noise, Gate, actually, no, noise gate would potentially help, but um, I didn't cover it, but I did show you the dynamics effect that I popped up earlier. There was an expander, a downward expander. Those are very good because what they do, instead of gating out completely the audio, it's like having someone on a fader and kind of fading down audio when it's not, you don't want it to be heard, like a super fast producer. So if you set that just right, it will catch like lower volume breaths and fade them down. So hopefully that'll help. Um, I'm hoping you can myth bust or myth confirm for me. I was told that the like the volume of your voice it should between, be between minus six and minus twelve dB. Is that correct? Is that what sounds natural? So that when you go from one video to the next, one video doesn't sound louder than another. It's a really good question. So it's a, it's a really good best practice to record definitely at that kind of range, and you'll see that when you're using software like Audition, it has uh, on the level meters it has green yellow and red, and, and generally I think yellow is minus 12 to minus 6, you want to be recording in that range. With regards to like staying in that range so that you're, you're talking about so that you go to the next video and it doesn't get louder and suddenly blast your ears out and the next video is quiet, that's, that's a problem that still exists because every creator has to make a decision how loud they want to be, right? So some people are super loud, some people not. Um, so something I would definitely advise is uh, compressing it, but also looking into loudness as well. I don't know, have you come across loudness before? So look into loudness, and there's a, a certain standard for streaming. I think it's minus 14 or minus 16 LUPs. And this is, um, essentially it's an algorithm that looks at your entire video audio, and it says, okay, this is about minus 16 LUPs for the whole duration. And then if every other creator made their videos at that particular loudness, we'd all have similar sounding videos. But yeah, hopefully that gives you a little bit of an answer. Thanks. Hi. Hi. Um, in, okay, in your opinion, what do you think is like the most basic set of audio equipment that you need for someone who's starting out? Really good question. Can I ask you another question back? Yes. Um, so what is your intention? What do you want to do? Um, well, Yeah. Okay, let's say singing. Okay, cool. So you would not be roaming about or outside anywhere. You would generally be recording in one place. Yeah. Okay, cool. So for singing, I would generally recommend uh, going quite high end on your equipment um, because obviously you want to sound as good as you possibly can. So if you're using a microphone that isn't very good, it's not going to do your voice justice. Um, if you're talking to camera, you can definitely get away with a lapel or a, a shotgun mic. Uh, start at the budget end there. For singing, I definitely advise, well the microphone is definitely everything, um, but also the room you're recording in is everything as well. And actually, uh, later on in my podcasting session, I talk a little bit about treating your room to get good sounding audio. But you're asking about the best kind of entry level equipment. Um, 
So I'd say, providing you've got a decent recording room, that's not gonna be too echoey, go for a condenser microphone. Uh, you can get some really good ones. Um, I've recently been very, I, I, I'm impressed with a range of different mics, so I don't have any particular microphone brand that I, I recommend, but I found Blue Embers to be a really good, uh, the Blue Microphones, it's called Blue, Mic Blue Ember from Blue Microphones. It's very new, um, it's like $100, and that's really good for all kinds of creation of music. If you want to go a little higher up though, I'm going to recommend to you like Audio Technica or Neumann microphones. If you're a singer, like you can't beat the Neumann TLM 103, that's around a thousand pounds, but it's super worth it and it will give you great vocals. And you won't have to sit there in Adobe Audition tweaking EQ and adding high end because it would just make you sound good. So does that answer your question? Cool. Um, I have a little follow up to the noise slash loudness um, thing. So when I'm editing, uh, especially the audio part, I, I'm always worried that I'm either uh, too, la uh, too loud or too low for the audience. I'm editing either with the studio headphones or with speakers of some sort. I don't have any professional monitors. Uh, how do I make sure that it's not too loud or usually the case is loud enough so that like they don't have to crank up their volume to 100% and YouTube to 100% and then like listen real close. <laughs> so how do you make sure that your audio is sounding good in real time or after How do I make sure that when I'm delivering it, whether it's YouTube or a file to someone, that it's the right uh, volume, basically? Good for... question. Okay, so something you can do with your audio once you finish recording it is you can do a practice called normalization. And normal, uh, to normalize audio, it's uh, an effect in audition under effects, amplitude and compression, normalize. And you click there and then you can set normalize to minus 3 dB. That's probably a good best practice is minus 3 dB. And that will look at your whole audio. And unlike loudness, I was talking to this lady over here about, where it looks at the whole file and um, increases or decreases the level based on the loudness of the whole file. Normalization will take the loudest part of your file and then increase it to increase that loudest bit to minus three. Um, so normalization, yeah, can, can get over that issue of being loud enough, if you know what I mean. So if you, if you record it really quiet and the audio is really quiet, normalizing it brings it straight up without making any changes to the audio. So it might help, is that, is that good? Yeah. Uh, yeah, in terms of compression, equalization, normalization, I was wondering, uh, what would you suggest in what order to use certain tools? Very good question. I love that. That's excellent. You deserve a round of applause yourself for asking that question. <laughs> That's excellent because, um, yeah, that is, it's an excellent question because if you put the effects in the wrong order inside your effects rack, um, you're going to have an issue with, with the audio. Um, so, for instance, if you put in a compressor first, and then you put in a noise gate, or a, no, sorry, a denoise or something like that, uh, you're gonna have the problem with the compressor pulling all the audio up, and then the denoise will have to work that much harder to get rid of things. But you are specifically about compression and EQ. So I would say, first of all, you want to equalize in general, and then you want to compress. And the reason for that is when you EQ a waveform, you will get different spikes appearing in the waveform, and the compression just like levels that all out and keeps that nice and flat. If you compress first and then EQ, you're gonna get spikes and it's it's just not gonna be very tidy. So yeah, you can totally ruin audio if you don't get effects in the, the right way. So a brief answer, definitely go in more depth uh, with you afterwards. But yeah, thanks for asking the question, cool. I, I have a question about editing. When sometimes I'm recording, I might speak too fast and if I have to cut something out, I get very, um, annoying uh, pop sounds uh, in between. Is there like a best practice how to avoid those? So pops on the microphone when you pop, 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 pop. No, no. When, I'm, uh, when I have to cut, when I have to cut out something, like I might um, bite my tongue and then I have to cut it out in editing, but um, the transition from one cut to another is very... Good. Yeah, understand, understand. And you're working in Premiere Pro, I assume. Are yeah. you, where you're getting that right. That's really interesting. Um, Premiere Pro is well known for awkward cuts. <laughs> it's not as smooth as Adobe Audition. So yeah, you're right. And I'm sure a lot of other people in the room have experienced that. You'll make a chop, you'll edit, you'll push things together, and it just won't sound right. Now, 
Uh, I'm an audition first kind of guy, but um, I do know some little things in Premiere Pro. There is an effect I think you can access um, if you go into you know the effects menu and you drop down. If you type in, I think it's called something like constant power or something like that. Yes, I'm right. Oh, good. Or constant gain. Or constant gain, yeah. And you can drop that in as a transition between your edits and it will kind of do a quick crossfade like that. So it fades out, fades in really seamlessly. So that will solve your problem. Um, if you really want to get into detail with your editing and make sure everything's sounding smart, uh, get it over to Adobe Audition, where just naturally when you're working inside the multi-track, you can just budge things together and it automatically crossfades them. But it's a common problem. You, you make a cut, you shuffle up, and then it's pop, pop, pop that little click in between all the edits. So great question. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, quick question about that. I'm trying to be best at like, voiceover like, workflow. Half an hour to 45 minutes to warm up my voice. So I'm thinking there must be a better way to warm up my voice apart from having a cup of tea and just la 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 <laughs> warmed up. So can you give us some, any more tips? And also, when does the Mike Russell um, Premier plugin come out? <laughs> <laughs> He's not a plant. <laughs> He's not a plant, are you? Uh, that's a really good question. So uh, that allows me to be a little bit silly, which uh, I wanted to do for the whole session. Uh, so, how do you warm up your voice before speaking? Uh, a lot of voiceover artists will tell you a few uh, tools you can do. I really can't sing, but I'm going to sing for you now, sing as you asked for this. Yeah. Sing the vowels, okay? A E I O U, A E I O U. So sing, sing the vowels and just be really silly, just be wild, especially if there's no one else around you, just totally crazy. So go crazy. Another really <laughs> cool tip that multiple different voiceover artists have told me is you just sit there in front of the mic and you do this. This is going to seem really weird. You just go, Ah. Ah. <laughs> like that, and apparently it warms everything, it does the right things inside. Thanks for the question. Um, if you don't have a, a mic plug in your ca camera, what are your options? So what would you like to achieve? If you, if you mean if you don't have an external mic plugged in? So what would you, how would you like your audio to sound, or how would you like to, do you mean, um, can you record something somewhere else, or? So are there external mic options, uh, voice recorders, what would you recommend? Totally, so yeah, when recording stuff into a camera, right, there's a couple of ways you can do it. Um, and I know probably one of the easiest ways for you as a, a video creator first, is definitely plugging something into that mic slot on top of your camera. Um, there's a few things I'm really impressed with. So, first of all, yeah, you can do the like wireless lavalier or something like that. Uh, you can plug in a shotgun microphone. Um, another thing you can do is you can get a good quality microphone in front of you, record it into something like Adobe Audition uh, while you're recording on your camera. Just at the start, you just you just do a you just do a clap, a quick clap, so you get that snap in the waveform. So you can see how Premiere Pro also has the option to synchronize if you uh, right click the new audio you recorded and the video, and then click synchronize, you can actually sync it together. Um, something I've been really impressed with recently, I think it's a relatively new product, uh, is the Rode News Shooter Kit. Uh, and that's got a microphone that you simply hold. You can also plug in lavalier microphones, and it's wireless. Uh, and I picked it up towards the end of last year. I actually didn't bring it to VidCon, but it's fantastic if you're like running around an expo floor and you want to get quality audio into your camera. Uh, that's some of the best ways I've found. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Hi, um, earlier you gave recommendations for uh, a singing microphone, but what if we do instructional voiceovers, kind of like what you did? What did you use, and could you give us a recommendation? Okay, you sounded really good. Thank you. <laughs> come, come to my podcasting course, because I'm, I'm definitely going to be covering that uh, in Podcasting 101 later. Are we, are we just about on time? Is this the last question? or? Last Last, last one or more? Just one. Yeah, just for last one. Last L one. So this is the last question. So I really want to do feel free to grab me after the session if you want to ask me a question afterwards. Um, so to answer your last question, really good question with the, the microphone. I've just had a mind blank. Remind me again. It was microphones for recording screen flows, wasn't it? Yeah. 